nearby town and register. Why should we go to Bethlehem? Bethlehem is far away. Are you listening to me? <clears throat> they could have thought like that, that. Mary, you are due. Let's go to a place that is not far. The stress will be too much. At least just to register. Hallelujah. They could have done that. But they fully obeyed. Because the scripture had been written that the baby they carried will be born in Bethlehem. Now, if that decree was not made, Jesus will have been born in Galilee and will contradict the scripture. Hallelujah. He must not be born in Galilee. No. Hallelujah. He must be born in Bethlehem. And the power of God pushed them, you have to go. You have to go. And they found themselves in Bethlehem. And then the baby said, I want to come out now. I am ready to come out. You can't escape it. I want to come out. So that's why they were looking for him. They were looking for a place. There was no place. And they have to look for a manger. And they gave birth to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, there's a lot of things God opened my eyes to see in that passage. When God tells you to do something or the other comes, some are for you to obey. I mean, they are for you. Not that some, they are all for you to obey. Let me give you a deep understanding of what is going on. Many people don't know what is going on in the atmosphere, especially the government, the situation around. You know, I told you that there's a prophecy that said that UK must pull out. I mentioned it. That a prophet said, the man of God has said that UK is not part of the European Union by what is written in Revelations. That UK is not part of European Union by the book of Revelations. That they are only there. They need to pull out. Hallelujah. And you will see that there is a lot of resistance. That's what brought out the last election. And God raised somebody that was so adamant. You have to pull out. If I say by end of January now, he doesn't care. We are pulling out. He's taking that decision. Not him, but it has been written. It's only flowing according to the scripture. Many of us may want to resist him. Why is he doing like this? Why this and that? The scripture must be fulfilled. Hallelujah. There's nothing we can do. In fact, when they were demonstrating, when people that want to remain were demonstrating in London, you would think that they are going to win the election. Hallelujah. They said they were in millions. But God was quiet. The scripture must be fulfilled. They must pull out. Hallelujah. Many don't know that Antichrist will come from the European Union. Did you hear me say that? He raised it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And UK is not part of them. If you go to European Union building, you will see the, the prophecy about the beast that was mentioned in the scripture. You will see it in front of their headquarters. The picture, the beast is also part of what they put there. Hallelujah. But it's for a time. So you can need to pull out. And when you look at also something, when European Union was there, it, it stopped people from flowing in, especially Africans, especially Commonwealth. They said the policy is that they must first employ all the European Union people. Then the remnant will be for others. And you realize that the European Union came and flooded that UK started making policy to shut the door against many nations. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Amen. They shut doors against many nations. And there is another prophecy which I've shared on this altar that a missionary, I think a man of God said many years ago, that the nations that the forefathers of this country have gone to preach to, that they will come back and preach to them for the last revival. The last revival will not happen <clears throat> until the, the generations, the, the children of people that they have been preached to will come back. And How many of us have heard about that prophecy? Because it's, it's a well-known prophecy. Amen. That those generations, the children of people they've preached to, that they have died for, that they, you know, Britain did so much work. They are the ones that evangelized Africa and many parts of the world. And the prophecy said that a time will come, these people will derail, Britain will derail, but those children of those people that they have preached to, they will come back and preach the gospel to them. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going somewhere. But the European Union blocked the door. 
that these people will not come in. And he cannot resist the scripture. So it came to time, they pull out. When we pull out now, there is a lot of vacancy. They open doors that please come in. We need people from Africa, Ghanaians, different parts of the world come in. And you see many Christians now coming in. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. People are now coming in. Because the scripture must be fulfilled. They've shut the door. But God has a way of opening his door. Now they will say they have over 50,000 vacancy of nurses, of doctors, of medical people in NHS. And where are they going to? Pulling people. People that they have shut the door against. The scripture must be fulfilled. Sometimes we look at it as a normal thing. Oh, you know, economically we have different theory to say. The law of demand and supply. They are all prophet. We are talking of prophecy. Amen. Quote your laws. It's prophecy that must be fulfilled. Amen. Some of us are here, not that you want it to be. Some of us are here, not that you want to be here. But because we are one of those God has raised as the children of those generations that are coming to preach the gospel. Are you listening to me? And everyone that will come, God knows them, and they will come. They will come in. Either way, when you lock the door, directly or indirectly, they must come. Do you know that some of us, some children you are going to give birth to, if you give birth to them in your country, where you come from, that is not where they're supposed to be. God will bring you here to give birth to them, like Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So that these are the people that will rule this nation in the future. Those are the evangelists of this nation. Some of you want to return back. That why did I come to this country? Things are not working. Let me go back. God will force you to stay. Why? Because what he needs for the evangelizing of this nation, you carry it. Hallelujah. Sometimes it may not be convenient, but the prophecy must be fulfilled. When I see some nurses and doctors coming in, I say, welcome. We will be expecting you. They don't know why I'm saying welcome. Because prophecy must be fulfilled. Some of them, the children they are going to give birth into this nation, in this nation, will be the evangelists of that time. And some of them are even here that God will use to change this nation. Hallelujah. So there are some things that you don't know. If I tell you how I go to this country, you will know that it is in God's plan. I was okay in Nigeria. Amen? But God decided to seal the womb of my Is it the womb? It's me that God dealt with. Amen? Hallelujah. Because doctor said it was me that had something. That, I mean, that had medical issue. We're in Nigeria. We're okay. You know, my wife said, let's travel abroad. I said, I'm not going. I'm okay. Everything is okay with me. But she said, this medical area, your health, you know, they are more advanced in technology in Britain. They may find solution. I said, I think you are right. Amen. So let's resign. I resigned. I said, let's come to the UK. Hallelujah. I came to the UK. The following month, my wife got pregnant. What we are waiting for for five years. Hallelujah. And it was when I came here that I saw one, something God had shown me while I was in the university. And I said, ah, God, you are truly a game player. Even more for the fruit of the womb, I know God knows that I will not want to come. But you use something to bring me down here. Hallelujah. And I'm sure some of you have your own stories to say. <clears throat> Until you obey before manifestation comes. I'm only encouraging people today that some of us are here, if not all of us, God has prepared you for end time evangelism. God has raised you here for a purpose. Like Jesus was taken to Bethlehem and said, I want to come out now. In Bethlehem, I want to come out. Hallelujah. Don't run away. Just ask God, God, what is my purpose here? Because God will not always tell you everything. If you look at the book of Acts about Philip, the book of Acts 8, 26 to, 20, 26 to 29, I will read. The book of Acts 8, 
26 to 29. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. Let me stop there. The Lord told Philip, Arise and go to where? It goes to road between, I mean, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. God, the Spirit told him to do that. The Lord spoke to him. God did not tell him what he wanted to, him to do there. Hallelujah. God said, go. You know, a normal man, I mean, a professional like us, well trained, you went to university, you heard the Holy Spirit telling you to go by the road. You say, God, what do I want to go and do by the road in the first place? I need 10 reasons. Hallelujah. If you are there, I need 10 reasons. Why I should go and stay by the road? And God said to Philip, go and stay by the road. He said, yes, sir. And he went to stay by the road. It was when he stood there that the next instruction came. Many of us want to get all this to now before we move. But you will stay longer. Because the next instruction, the person that will pass to you wait to the road. If you go to the road, you will not get the next instruction. Look at it again. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to him. That was what he's saying. Arise and go towards the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. This is desert. The Bible says, this is desert. Amen? It's what? So it's not even a place that you wish to go. God was sending him to a desert place. A desert is where there is no human being. Even if there is any, it's not where they live. It's a dry place. God said, go there and stay there. And the Bible says, So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, <coughs> a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, and come, had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake these chariots. Hallelujah. So that means he must even stay there for some time until when that man came, the Enoch. Hallelujah. All I want you to know today is that learn from the birth of Mary. There are some things that will happen. You may not get the final instruction, but flow with the Lord. Policy may happen in the office. They may want to change you or change department. Seek God. Lord, give me grace. Is it you? Don't resign. Sometimes God will say, Don't resign. It's a promotion setting for you. It may look like demotion, but God knows that it's a promotion. Don't walk out. Don't resign. I'm going, uh, there's a better offer. But Holy Spirit may say, Stay. Because they have made the decision is only for your own favor. Are you listening to me? God's way is different from our ways. God will not show you everything. No matter how you fast you pray, he will not show you everything. But some things that have been written about you, because everybody, there is a story, there is a book that contains your journey. All he wants you to do is work with him, and you will enter into your destiny. And I pray all of us will fulfill our destiny. Destinies in Jesus' name. You will fulfill your destinies in Jesus' name. You will not fail in Jesus' name. No matter the situation you are facing now, God has a plan for you. What did I say? God has a plan for you. Sometimes some people will say, I came to the UK trusting God. Now, I have a broken marriage, but God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. As long as we, you are with him, he has a plan for you. Hallelujah. He loves you so much that he will not reject you. All you need to do is flow with him. 
Maybe there is a wilderness you need to pass through. Maybe it's a desert you need to stay. And after that desert, God will show you the next thing to do. And you will not miss it. In the name of Jesus. Now, what should I do now? Number one is that have a relationship with God. Your relationship with God is very, very key. Mary and Joseph had relationship with God. That is why they were able to understand the time and season. When the policy came from Caesar Augustus, they just knew that it's time to go to Bethlehem. Though it was not convenient for them. But they had to be. They didn't go to nearby town. They went to Bethlehem. Because they are of the city of David. You must have a relationship with God. Number two is obedience. Obedience to the authority. It may be church authority. It may be office authority. It may be governmental authority. We must obey. When you look at the scripture, the Bible, in the book of Romans 13, 1 to 3, Romans 13, 1 to 3, the Bible says, let every soul be subject to the governing authority. I don't know, maybe that is in your Bible. Romans 31. Let every soul be subject to, unto the higher powers. In my own scripture, we have it. Governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And the authority that exists are appointed by God. Hallelujah. Some decision can take place sometimes by the authority. That look can get you angry. Obey. Because some things happen. I've seen people disobeying authorities. You know, like this is, I'm more here. Let me say the church authority. Sometimes the authority, the order may come and may not be convenient. So why will pastor ask me to do this? Why will he ask me to do this? And God will not explain to you why he asks you to do that. Hallelujah. God will not explain. But when you obey in the future, you will know the reason. Why he asks you to do it. Hallelujah. And it will definitely be for your benefit. It will definitely be for your benefit. Because your journey may have to pass through that level. Hallelujah. Therefore, whosoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. If Mary and, Ma Mary and Joseph had resisted the authority of Caesar Augustus. I mean, there were many people. The, the census was for the whole world. If they resist the authority, they will have missed it. Because the scripture must be fulfilled. Jesus must be born where? In Bethlehem. They have the will to resist. But they obeyed. And the scripture was fulfilled. I pray for every one of us today. What I've been written concerning you, concerning your life will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. It may not be convenient. It may, it may not be convenient. Hallelujah. Because I know every one of us is pregnant. You are pregnant of destiny. You are pregnant of something God will use to take you higher. But there is a location of birth. What did I say? There is a location of birth. And if you miss that location of birth, it can disrupt the story. You know, the Israelites, God told them that when he takes them from the bondage, he will take them to the promised land, and that is where they dwell, and they will take over the land. But you know, along the line, some of them refused to obey. They said, we can't go in. That we can't go in. But the scripture says they will go in. But they are saying they can't go in. God said, okay, if you can't go in, you stay here. Your children will go in. I pray we will not be replaced. In the name of Jesus. Because it is already written that they will go in. And they are saying, those people, they are giants. We can't go in. We are not going. We are going back to Egypt. And it's not written in the scripture that they return back to Egypt. It's not written. So, there was a standstill. And that standstill... God had to wait for 40 years for that generation to die. And he now took those wounds that are 
not even trained those one that even lack knowledge about many things those are the ones it took to the promised land you know knowledge can kill sometimes those ones are too knowledgeable they have seen too much things and they were so knowledgeable they have seen giants in the past so they're so 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 afraid of giants and god said don't worry you are not going i will take those people that don't care the carefree people people that they are just being born in the wilderness and all they know is wilderness i will take them there people that have not enjoyed the city life people that have not seen weapons people that have not seen modern weapons i will take them there they will go and face the giants and conquer i pray we will not be replaced in the name of jesus is there anything you are struggling with that the lord is saying do move and do it because the scripture must be fulfilled you see when body comes to obey go and obey hallelujah when you have no rest that you need to do this go and do it because the scripture must be fulfilled the journey to your destiny god will always set you up and to fulfill it and i pray you will not fail in jesus name number three is avoid to tell you why do you obey why don't you apply different ways why don't you do this this way there are many even the Israelites face them. If you look at the book of Numbers, I think chapter 10 now, of, of 14, they call them mixed multitudes. They are not going anywhere. They are not the one that will run your destiny with you. All you need to do is avoid rebellious people. Mixed multitude. They have nothing to lose. They are not the one God promised the promised land to. So they have nothing to lose. All they do is they are craving for enjoyment. Look at the scripture. They were craving. They were craving for cucumber and some other food that they were eating in Egypt. But they are not the one God is taking to the promised land. And they made the Israelites to sin. Be careful of mixed multitude. Be careful of people that will make you rebel against God. That is why choose your friends. If you ever want to succeed in life, choose friends that are godly, that fear God, that knows the God you are serving that fears the God you are serving. Those people, you can walk along and succeed and fulfill destiny. But if you make friends, I'm not saying you shouldn't have anybody as friends. I have many people. You see, you can have many friends, but there are some friends that I did mention. I'm not afraid of friends I can influence, but I'm afraid of friends that can influence me. You know, I've said that before. I'm not afraid of anyone. I can make friends with anybody. But as long as they are not strong good to my life, I don't have problem. But those ones that can influence me, I need to be careful of how I relate with them. Because those ones can destroy me. And everybody, whoever you are in life, you will always have friends that can influence you. You will. And you have those that you are influencing. Praise the Lord. So be careful of those that you associate with that can destroy God's plan for your life. The next point is pray. Pray. Pray for God's will to be done in your life. If you look at the book of Luke 22, 42 to 43. <clears throat> Luke 22, 42 to 43 says, Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. The angel did not strengthen Jesus until when Jesus said, Only your will. Until you are ready for God's will before strength of heaven can come. Hallelujah. If you are still saying my will, this is what I want, this is what I desire, heaven will not support you. Though you can walk, you will struggle, you may make little impact, but it's not God's impact. Jesus said, if it is your will, <clears throat> take this cup from me, but not my will, only your will. And the same thing Mary and Joseph did. God is all I want to do is your will. Your will. Your will. When you say God I want your will. Then heaven will send help. The Bible says an angel came to strengthen Jesus. Because he said only your will. God loves people that love his will. God is waiting for his children that will say Lord it's only your will I want in this world. Amen. You know, I was telling you the other time that some people, if they put money here, if they put peace here, 
What will you choose? I'm sure some people are saying, ah, Pastor, it's money now. <laughs> but what you don't know is that money can never buy peace. I've seen people with money. I'm a pastor now. I've seen people, and I've, I've seen people in life, I've been to places, I've seen people that they have money, and yet you see them crying. There was a time somebody was speaking to me. You know, she was okay. This lady was very okay. Say, Pastor, I won't go to take this money. I need my peace. I need my peace. I was smiling. Because the money was there, but there was no peace. What is the joy of money when there is no peace? You can't enjoy the money. Whereas a man that has peace, if it is one pound bread, ah, he will enjoy he will dance, he will sleep well, no medical issue, he will just do everything on his own. Whereas you, that you have the money, you say, oh, why is this man laughing? You don't know why he's laughing. He doesn't even have shoes, he's laughing, he's so happy, he's walking and dancing. Say, ah, why can this man be dancing and me, I have, I, have, I have a plane, I have everything, yet I'm crying. The difference is the peace. That's why Jesus said, I am the prince of peace. He didn't say I'm a prince of prosperity. You know prosperity will, prosperity will, I mean it's little. I mean the treasure of life is peace. Why am I aiming for heaven? There is peace in heaven. Hallelujah. There is peace in heaven. There is peace in heaven. They've cast out the devil. Amen. If you read the book of Revelation, they've cast out the devil and all his agents. So there is peace in heaven. There is peace in heaven. Amen. And that's why Jesus said, I give my peace to you, not the way the world gives peace. Even some people run after money is because they want to buy peace. That they think, if I have this money, I will have peace. But they realize that when they have the money, without Christ, they see crisis. Hallelujah. So, obeying the will of God makes you to enjoy the peace of God. And I pray we enjoy his peace in Jesus' name. Seek the leading of the Holy Spirit. The last point. Seek the leading of the Holy Spirit. Seek the leading of the Holy Spirit. Seek the leading of the Holy Spirit. Where a decision of a government is antichrist, the Holy Spirit will tell you that that decision is antichrist. Hallelujah. While they are planning to kill Jesus, the Lord told them the night, take your child and move to where? Egypt. Jesus did not wait there. They did not leave him there because they know that a killer, a decision, a governmental decision is coming and it's an antichrist decision. The Holy Spirit moved them out and brought them back again. So that means that we cannot do without the Holy Spirit in this generation. Holy Spirit will make you to discern, to understand which one is God. Which one is of the devil? If this is of the devil, you know how to run. The Holy Spirit say, run and go and hide. I pray we will know this God's plan for our lives. My desire that everyone here, you will fulfill your destiny. That you will not go to Galilee instead of you going to Bethlehem. In the name of Jesus. It may be stressful. It may be painful. But the scripture I've been written is in Bethlehem. What God has written concerning you, you will fulfill in the name of Jesus. And that greatness that you carry, you will give birth to it at the location God has prepared for you in the name of Jesus. And God will make you to say, God, not my will, but your will, so that heavenly strength can come. And God will send help to you in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up. I want you to thank God that God I thank you. Lord, thank you for sending your word to me again. Thank you for sending your word to me again. Thank you for sending your word to me again. That until I obey, until I obey. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want us to pray. Everybody grace to obey. I tell you the truth. 
It's not easy to carry nine month pregnancy to travel on a journey to, to Bethlehem. But it has been written. And they have to flow with the, what has been written. Tell God that God give me the grace to flow with what has been written concerning me. You are not created for nothing. God has written your journey in life. Where he wants you to be part time. Sometimes the location may not even be enduring. God sending a man to the desert. But he had to be there. The Father give me the grace, O Lord. To obey you. To obey according to what you have written concerning me. Many of us here, we have great destinies. Many things have been written concerning us. But obedience takes priority in God's calendar. Give me the grace. Even if there is any government policy that I'm resisting, any church policy, any organizational policies that I'm resisting, but they are meant for my destiny. Father, give me the grace to obey. Give me the grace to obey. Just the grace to obey. Just the grace to obey. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I want us to pray. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit, lead me. Lead me on that path to fulfillment. The path that will make me to fulfill my journey, to fulfill my assignment. Lead me, O Lord. Let's pray for Divine Lady. Join your hand with your brother. Pray for that person, that Father, please lead my brother. Lead my sister. Lead him. Lead her, O Lord. The scripture must be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. Pray. Pray for that person. The grace to say your will, not my will. The grace to say your will, not my will. So that every strength will come is what I'm praying for my brother. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You know, some of us are Jonah. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. Some are running to Tashish. I want us to pray. That father, if my brother is a Jonah, running away from the place of assignment, please in your mercy, take him back to the place. It may be painful. Take him back. God used a very strange transportation to take Jonah back to Nineveh. He used a will to take him back to Nineveh. Father Lord, take him to that place you want him to be. Where you have sent him, O Lord. Where the afterment will be fulfilled. Where he will flourish. Where she will flourish in life. Maybe career life. Or business life. Or anything you want him to do. Whether you even want him to be a worker. And he's running away. She's running away. To work for you. Father in your mercy. Bring him O oh Lord to that place you want him to be. In Jesus name we have prayed. Father we thank you. We give all the glory to you. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We also have learned through his birth that obedience brought about his birth, O oh Lord. And that scripture must be fulfilled. Father, I pray for every one of us here today. I know books have been written concerning us. Give us the grace, O oh Lord, to fulfill destiny. Some people are here. They don't know the reason. Some don't know that they are, they are, you brought them here for the end time revival. Father, don't let us miss it. In Jesus' name. Don't let us run after money, but to run after you, Lord. Don't let us run after pleasure, but to run after you. Don't let us run after men, but to run after you. In the name of Jesus. The grace, O oh Lord, to be your plans. The grace, O oh Lord, to be your plan. Let it be fulfilled. Thank you for opening the door of this nation to bring in more people. Because prophecy must be fulfilled. As they come, Father, settle them down. 
give them understanding their play their role in this end time evangelism in the name of jesus let's just bless the name of the lord let's bless his name stretch forth our hands to the man of God. Let's bless the Lord. Let's appreciate God for his life. That the virtue, the power that have gone out of him, the Lord Almighty will replace it abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray that him and his household that they will make it at the end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray that the Lord Almighty will strengthen him. I want us to pray that he will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The message that our Father in heaven have sent him to do he will not ignore them in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. It's announcement time and as well as um, offering time. Uh, so we'll be, so I'll be making the announcement. Please, let's also package our offering. Let's give unto the Lord. Uh, the book of Matthew 6, 3 said, Seek the Lord, he says, seek the Lord, I mean, seek the kingdom of the Lord, our Father in heaven, and his righteousness, and uh, we will be blessed as we give to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. First, uh, we, if you're a first timer in power of Jehovah, if you are coming into this church for the first time, via through the internet, you've seen us through the internet, or through one-on-one, -on -one, could you just lift up your hands up? I know this year, uh, I welcome everyone into this service, and I welcome uh, every family. Um, every Monday, we normally have our, our prayers at 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. Uh, you can always uh, make use of your phone to call or join online. Also, Wednesday, there is always a fellowship prayer, I mean, uh, a house fellowship prayer that we normally gather for one hour, seven to eight, depending on the house fellowship. Some do not have their own on Tuesday. Thank you, the ITs have actually showed it on TV. On Friday, the first week of every Friday, we normally have our uh, uh, communion service. But the last Friday, uh, this last Friday, we'll be having our championship service, which normally commences at 7 to 8.30 p.m. I invite you all to come. The Lord Almighty will bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 31st of uh, December, sorry, 31st of December of this year will be our watch night service, which is our Amen. crossover service. Uh, I want us to just give God all the glory. Let's bless His name. Let's appreciate Him. Jesus. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him. Service will commence by 10 p.m., probably be finishing by 12.30 a.m. But as you all, all know that every year we normally have loads of loads of people coming down and they always overflow. So if you love to take a seat, I would say you should be in to the church as early once again as Pastor has actually given it. But uh, I want to thank every one of them who has actually support parents, uncle, in one way or the other. Financially, you've actually given to these uh, parties that the children have just done. I pray that the Lord Almighty will bless you richly in the name of Jesus Christ. Your pocket will not run dry in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you ask, the Lord Almighty will answer speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, can the choir help us with... Uh... Can we all just be on our feet as we give our offerings to the Lord? Amen. 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 At the mansion.
ocean of your name. Every knee must bow At the mention of your name Every tongue confess That you are Lord You are Lord of Lords You are King You are King of Kings At the mention of your name of your name every tongue confess that you are Lord you are Lord of Lords you are King you are King of Kings as a mention of your name every knee must bow of your name, every time confess, be all the glory, be all the honor, be all the glory, and adoration forevermore. Let's stretch for child to the off. Ask that the Lord Almighty will bless the works of our hands. As many that has given, you will never lack in the name of Jesus Christ. You've given to the house of your Father. The Lord Almighty will remember you in the day of need in the name of Jesus Christ. And for those that are unable to give, Lord Almighty, provide for them, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as we go forth, Lord, let your spirit go before us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Moses said, if you're, Lord, if you're not going to go before us in this journey, we will not make an, we will not make an inch. Father, as we go this week, go before us, O Lord. Father. Let our offering speak for us, O Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, in heaven, that you will raise campaign manager for us in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Lord, the year is coming to an end. Many expectations, Daddy. Many are saying, Lord... We've, we, we've asked, we've not received. Fire this offering, Lord, answer them speedily. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we are, ex we are expecting more surprise, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. That all glory, all honor, and adoration belongs to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Before we go, can you just ask God what you want God to do this Christmas season? Because Jesus is the reason for the season. Just speak to the Lord what you want him to do. I want a Christmas gift from the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell God, speak to him. He's your father. He's your God. He's your Lord. The Lord, this is what I want from you, Daddy. You are my God. If you want more of him, tell God that God, I want more of you. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Feel me more of you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I decree into your life in the name of Jesus. As you go, the praise of the Lord will go with you. The Lord will surprise you. The Lord will give you his gifts. That will surpass any gift any man will give you. You will flourish in the name of Jesus. You will not regret serving God. You will not regret serving God. You will not regret even celebrating the birth of Christ in the name of Jesus. This week will bring a mighty turnaround in your families, in your life, in Jesus' name. The reason for the season will visit you. Because Jesus is the reason for the season, you shall be visited. And everything shall turn to testimony for you. 
in the name of Jesus. You will not cry. You will not mourn. You will not regret. The Lord will be with you. The angels of the Lord will surround you. The fire of the Lord will shield you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, can we join our hands together for the family song? Until he comes There's no foe that can defeat us When we're walking side by side As long as there is love We will stand You're my brother, you're my sister So take me by the hand Together we will walk until we come. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. As long as there is love. We will stand with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us now and forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Forevermore. behind. God bless you. Thank you. 